Often referred to as the Nature Island, Dominica is considered one of the best kept secrets in the Caribbean, which I can't argue with because I knew almost nothing about Dominica before my trip. What I learned is that Dominica is one of the most rugged, dramatic, friendly, and untouched places in the world. The mountainous countryside is covered with lush rainforest, spectacular waterfalls, and peaks as high as 4,700 feet. And even though the island nation is only 29 miles long and 16 miles wide, it's home to over 300 miles of hiking trails and 365 flowing rivers. The coastline is equally impressive and dramatic, and it boasts world-class scuba diving, snorkeling, and fishing. But that's not why I came to Dominica. I came to experience the Caribbean's first sea kayaking trail, the Waitakabuli Sea Trail. What I discovered was one of the most breathtaking places in the world. Tales is brought to you by Discover Dominica, Track Kayaks, NRS, Aquabound, Wiley X, and Outdoor Play. I am in the small town of Sioux Frere in the southwestern corner of Dominica. And I'm about to hook up with Wes and Carrie from Sioux Frere Outdoor Center, who really spearheaded the whole Waitakabuli Sea Trail with the Dominican Ministry of Tourism. And we're about to explore a section of the Sea Trail in track kayaks. I can't wait, and it's time to hook up with them. Wes. Hey, morning, Ken. Good to finally meet you. Yeah, great to meet you too. Welcome to Sufer Bay. Wow, look at this. Yeah, it's lovely, huh? That's Scott's head in the distance, and uh, we're on the Caribbean Sea right now. We're going to launch from here today. Yep. We're going to do segment two of the White Scabuli Sea Trail. Um, we're headed that way, but let's, let's go check out the map over at the Kayak Center. Sounds good. All right. Here's the Kayak Center. We'll be going right up this coast in Sioux Frere Bay on the Caribbean right. seaside. Uh, we'll pass La Saucier, La Bim, pass Point Gennard, the Champagne Reef. That's where we have the geothermal activity and the uh, volcano is venting. So you have sulfur bubbles coming up. So you'll be uh, snorkeling through the champagne bubbles. Afterwards, we'll circle back for a nice Dominican cookout with uh, roast fish, Roast breadfruit, roast plantain. Yeah, I hope you can paddle back after all that food. Yeah. <laughs> this thing blows me away every time I do it. From a golf bag to a 16-foot sea kayak, in 15 minutes. I mean, how cool is that? And on top of that, I don't have to go do a warm up because I am warmed up already. But that's okay because we're going to hit the water right now. Well, we've got some interesting conditions. It's we got cloud, then sun, and then we got rain. It's, we got a whole mix. The wind's blowing a bit, but we're pretty sheltered here by the mountains of the island. It's gonna be a mixed bag today, but it doesn't really matter. This is my first time, well, paddling in Dominica, but also doing this section. And any time you do a section for the first time, it's the most magical experience. I can't wait to see what's around that corner. Uh, Sufer Outdoor Center was really conceptualized by myself and Carrie Elaine, my business partner. I was told that there was an individual that was very, very fascinated by kayaks and kayaking, and I was like, that sounds like me. So I met with Wes, and he had this big idea that we could circumnavigate Dominica. At first, I thought it was crazy, um, but then I'm thinking, man, I've been looking for this moment 
for my entire life. Every time we went out, we said, wouldn't this be a great tour? This just gives us fitness. It gives us peace of mind, well-being. We wanted to share it with others. So we conceptualized having the outdoor center in Soufrere that could make money off the tours, but also be accessible to the, the locals as well. Dominica is uniquely positioned. We have the calm Caribbean side for beginners and we have the Atlantic side for the intermediate and advanced paddlers. So we really have something to offer for all of the paddlers. This is where we are right now. It is after named after this peak, which is called La Sorcier. Oh, this wow. means the witch's yeah. point. It's also one of the dive sites in the marine reserve. La Sorcier is definitely one of the highlights in this segment. It's one of the most beautiful dive sites as well. If you're scuba diving or snorkeling, you could definitely do that there. And I think you're saying here it drops. It definitely does. Um, the continuation from La Bim is still the edge of that crater that goes all the way to Champagne. I spearheaded the development of the White Kabuli Sea Trail for several reasons. I love kayaking and um, I love expeditions, but I also prefer staying in accommodations over camping. And so uh, when I saw the coast of uh, Dominica, I said, this is ideal. This is perfect. We, you, can, you can kayak the whole way, you can stay in accommodations, you can do beautiful land excursions. And I thought, this is something I would travel and go do. Dominica has the only through hiking trail, the White Kabuli National Trail, which is 14 segments. And I said, wouldn't it be amazing to establish the first marine trail with 14 segments as well? The sea trail starts in the south of Dominica in the Martinique Channel, and it goes all the way north to the Guadeloupe Channel. I originally approached the Discover Dominica Authority and Ministry of Tourism with the idea, and they immediately bought into it. We're gonna be snorkeling right there. Uh, this is where we find the champagne bubbles, geothermal activity, where there's sulfuric gas coming from vents, giving you the appearance that we're snorkeling in a giant glass of champagne. Sweet. Don't drink the bubbles. Don't drink the bubbles. That's it. <laughs> you ready? Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Combining paddling and swimming for me as a whitewater paddler is something that I generally don't do because it usually means you've done something wrong. But in this case, I was dying to get out of the boat and go for a swim. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> but the mission is not complete yet. We still, well, we have to re-energize. We only have a short paddle back to one of the beaches we passed where we're gonna have a, a little cookout and put some energy back in the system because it's, it's been a busy day, but we're not done. One thing I've learned in the short amount of time I've been here in Dominica is that the weather can change like that. And so you have to be prepared for a quick change. Going around the corner, it was like a switch got flipped and the wind and rain machines were turned on because all of a sudden it was like we were getting pins and needles in the face. The wind and rain was coming at us so hard and it was literally on the verge of not being worth paddling because you weren't making any headway. When you're in 
conditions with strong winds and hard rain and choppy waves, you have to make a decision whether it's worthwhile moving forward or do you find shelter and wait it out. Fortunately, we didn't have to go too far before we got to the place where we were having our cookout. And turns out the cookout spot was a perfect place to wait out the storm. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> well, we made it to the cookout spot and <laughs> lucky for us, a bunch of the guys from Sufrero Outdoor Center came here early, cooked up all the food and it's ready and waiting for us. How nice is that? Perfect. Perfect timing too, because the weather just rolled in. It's blowing really hard now and, and raining. And But if there's one thing I've learned in the 36 hours I've spent in Dominica, it's that wait 10 or 15 minutes and the weather is likely gonna change. So we're gonna hunker down in this beautiful spot and wait a little bit before we make the paddle back home. 